an important part of discovery, of discovery is helping Ontario companies, institutions and researchers make meaningful and lasting business connections, both at home and overseas. In partnership with the Provincial Ministry of Economic Development, Trade and Employment, Discovery is pleased to welcome delegations representing leading companies and investors from India and the UK. Today, we are both honored and delighted to have our next presentation, which is a 10-member trade delegation from India. And here to introduce them is Dr. Tom Kaur, our President and CEO with the Ontario Centers of Excellence. Thank you, Sharon. I'm a little taller than her, so excuse me for a minute here. There we go. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're very happy to have the trade mission delegation from India at this year's Discovery. India is a value trading partner with Ontario, and we hope to see our relationship continue to flourish with even greater trade opportunities in the future. And Discovery is a wonderful opportunity for us to proudly display the leading edge technologies and innovations Ontario has to offer as well as to hear about specific areas of interest on the part of our business and investor friends from India. I would like to thank AJ, who is Ontario's representative at the Consulate General in, of Canada in Mumbai for organizing this opportunity. I encourage you all to connect with AJ and the delegates as they are available on the show floor for the remainder of today to talk about business opportunities and partnerships. Thank you to our India delegation for your interest in Ontario innovation. AJ, over to you. Um, hello and a very good morning to everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Tom and Ontario Centers of Excellence for providing us with this opportunity to bring a delegation from India and present them to the innovation ecosystem in Ontario. My name is Ajay Ramasubramaniam. I work with the Ontario International Marketing Center based out of Mumbai. We are a part of the Ministry of Economic Development, Trade and Employment, and our mandate for India as a market is to look at uh, trade and investment opportunities and relations between Ontario and India. <coughs> However, as an extension over the last couple of years, uh, as a part of our in-market strategy, we have uh, looked at innovation as an area which cuts across multiple streams, be it academic linkages, uh, be it trade partnerships, as well as investment opportunities. And that's what has made us focus on innovation as a thematic area of focus for the Indian market. Uh, I have with me over here a very diverse uh, set of uh, delegates uh, who are a part of the innovation ecosystem. And I call it diverse because there are people coming from the investor community, people who run startup incubators and accelerators, uh, professional services like tech transfer, legal advisory, and business advisory firms. So before I hand it over to the delegates to talk briefly about what they are here for, uh, I'd like to run you through a brief presentation about where this idea to, to bring a delegation to Ontario started from. So, So like I mentioned, uh, the delegate composition is, is very diverse, uh, investor community, the accelerators and incubators, and we have uh, professional services. And the focus area, as you can see on the slides, uh, the first one, uh, entrepreneurship development. So we have uh, delegates over here who are interested in collaborating with uh, academic institutions or professional learning institutes who offer courses in entrepreneurship development because there is definitely a big need uh, in India for these. Uh, over the next 10 years, there is a, a skill gap requirement which needs to be filled up, about 150 million odd people. And these jobs cannot be just created out of the industries which are in existence. So there needs to be a new set of companies which come up. And to start these companies, there are a need for entrepreneurs. And the course, the kind of courses that we are looking for is those which will enable people to, to allow strategic thinking, building business plans which are scalable. And that's why the need for these kind of courses. Technology incubation and, and acceleration. So these are more of partner-to-partner uh, -partner kind of linkages where startups from India can get support on the Ontario side. And likewise, startups from Ontario who have a, a, a target market in India can get access to advisory services, access to infrastructure, access to mentors. So there are uh, delegates over here who are looking at the P2P kind of linkages. 
uh, investment in, in technology innovation. Uh, we have a couple of venture funds over here who are looking at uh, accessing some of the interesting startups that might be going around uh, in Ontario. And likewise, uh, startups from uh, Ontario who are looking at accessing uh, India as a market and who are looking at uh, support services, they can definitely be of uh, help. Uh, cross-border deals, we have a, a law firm with us and a tech transfer agency. So for cross-border deals, as well as the next one, that is tech transfer and licensing opportunities, there are opportunities to, to interact and, and look at opportunities. So the, the genesis of this mission. So we identified two dots. We were always working with Ontario's innovation ecosystem, but over a period of time, we, we realized uh, India's need or India's recognition for the need of uh, innovation linkages. So connecting these two dots is the origin of where this mission started from. And over the next few slides, I'm going to talk about how we recognize this, this need which India has for innovation linkages. Over the last three to four years, uh, a number of corporate bodies in India or people who are heading or in leadership positions in some of the, the top corporates in India have set up uh, venture funds and likewise there are family owned funds which are investing in next generation technology. These may necessarily not go into the, the product suite that that particular company operates in, but surely as a next gen technology, there have been investments happening. And uh, probably about a couple of slides later, I'll, I'll cite an example of a company which has recently invested in, in, a, stim, in a such kind of a, a fund in an overseas university and its research fund. So some of the names listed here are either owned by uh, large corporates who are investing in technology or individuals who are heading large corporates or who have been founders of some of the large corporates have set together this, uh, these uh, venture funds to invest in next-gen technology. Likewise, uh, there is a lot of government support also offered for setting incubators and there are private incubators. We have about a couple of them over here with us. Uh, Center for Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship, which is uh, listed on the left-hand side of the slide. Uh, we have the director operations with us over here. So I'm, we have, I've just listed down a few uh, incubators which are currently operating in India. But uh, definitely uh, the, the ecosystem of incubators, accelerators, and working with the peer groups is, is picking up. And there is an opportunity to connect directly and form linkages. Uh, similarly, uh, both at the government level and at the private sector level, uh, there have been a lot of exchanges happening with uh, Israel, uh, some of the countries, Scandinavian countries like Finland, Sweden, and Denmark, and definitely with the, with the US. And these are basically for bringing in linkages to, to set up the innovation ecosystem in India, and likewise adapt to the best practices which are available. Uh, some of the international shows which have been around for a while, a demo was brought into India earlier this year. And similarly, the MIT-owned property, MTech Emerging Technologies, has been in India for about four to five years. And these shows coming into India have definitely provided a platform to some of the interesting emerging technologies in India to, to showcase themselves not only to, to their Indian counterparts or Indian stakeholders, but also some of the international uh, universities, research professors, and stakeholders of the innovation ecosystem to look at the interesting work happening in India. So not lagging behind, what we have done recently in the last six to 12 months where we have tried to profile Ontario's innovation ecosystem, a couple of months back there was a VC delegation where we had about seven top uh, venture caps and angel funds uh, visiting Ontario and they were a part of the DX3 which is uh, an innovation conference focusing on, on digital media and that was the first visit for a lot of them and they were pretty much impressed with the kind of uh, digital assets that Ontario has to offer. Uh, I've cited the example of a few companies which have been to Ontario and visited research parks and centers of excellence and have formed some kind of a structured agreement to, to work with those universities. Abalon Clean Energy uh, is working with UFT on a wood pellets research project. Uh, Wipro Technologies, which is a three billion corporation, uh, has been to Toronto and Waterloo in, in January this year and they're looking at uh, setting up a center of excellence focused on smart grid version 2.0. Uh, Tata Consultancy Services, uh, which has a presence in, in Ontario for a long time now. Co-Innovation Network, COIN, which is a part of the organization, looking at some of the best next-gen technologies in, in, in the digital format. They were in, in Ontario recently and visited Ottawa, Toronto, and, and Waterloo to look at some of the interesting work happening in the digital space and, and the mobile ecosystem to, to take to their international partners. Uh, Tata Industries, uh, Again, a part of the Tata group has been working with a couple of researchers in Ontario, focusing on lightweighting and, and so on. 
So this is the slide I was referring to. Tata, which is a multi-billion dollar enterprise, has recently invested in the University of Tel Aviv's uh, innovation program, and it is the largest stakeholder outside of the university. So these kind of linkages are happening, and this is uh, something that uh, universities and centers of excellence in, in Ontario can, can look out to uh, when we talk of India as a market, that these kind of opportunities exist to partner with the industry, and the industry is more than willing to partner on interesting technologies that the centers of excellence have to offer. So this particular investment focuses on healthcare, pharmaceuticals, clean tech, food security, environment, engineering, and, and software. And the takeaway that Tata has from this, or what the university has to give back to Tata in return, is the first right to access or the first right of rejection. So uh, the opportunities are definitely there because of the push which is coming from India. But what we have to look at or recognize is how do we pull these organizations to, to come to Ontario. And these can take place by showcasing what, is, what does Ontario have to offer in terms of the ecosystem and what are the best practices. Because this can give, give way to cross-pollination of startups or cross-border kind of linkages between Ontario and India. Similarly, there are opportunities for some of the interesting startups from, from Ontario to, to access India as a market, either through licensing their technology or tech transfer. And more importantly, there are a good number of Indian companies which have a base in, in India, in, in Ontario, and have a kind of a global spread. So for the centers of excellence to tap into these companies which are already present over here and leverage their global footprint is, is another way of doing it. And what we have been doing to, to encourage the last point is we did a program at Mars last year where we invited about 17 odd Indian large IT companies which have a presence in Canada. And the objective was to showcase what Canada or Ontario has to offer in terms of innovation and a single center of excellence. We are repeating that program this year at uh, Communitech, and the sole objective of that is to give access to some of the startups to such large corporations. And the access is not only Canada as a market or India as a market, but anywhere where they have a global footprint. And some of the hot sectors being digital media, mobile, IT applications in healthcare, medical devices. So any, any of the companies over here or centers of excellence which have uh, access to these technologies and are looking for their companies to, to access global markets or India as a market, the delegation over here would be a right fit to, to talk to. Last but most important, important to have the three Ps, patience to develop or grow India as a market, which is very critical, the passion to, to succeed in India or do business in India, and being proactive. I'm, Emails can take you only that far, but that proactiveness to reach out to any potential partner, that has to be there. And lastly, listening is very important. So just to conclude, uh, we have offices in uh, eight countries, so any of the, the companies or organizations over here who might not be aware of, we have a presence in Japan, in a couple of offices in China, three offices in, in Europe, a couple of them in, in the US, and one in Mexico City. And like I mentioned, innovation has been an in-market strategy for us for a good part of three years. It started with a small angel breakfast series we, we did with Mars through a live webcast. But uh, taking it to the real uh, uh, or real time, we have done innovation showcases at centers of excellence. And the reason to bring this delegation here is continuity of the, the in-market strategy. So with that, I'd like to conclude. Uh, I'm here for the rest of the day to take any of the questions. Now I'd like to hand it over to the, the delegates. Oops. So I'd like to invite uh, Akash Bhavsar from SkyQuest Technologies. Uh, very good morning to all of you here. Uh, my name is Akash Bhavsar. Uh, I represent uh, SkyQuest Technology Group. Uh, we are uh, uh, a multinational group of synergistic organizations uh, which essentially work with innovators and IP holders and companies to proceed from, uh, you know, from technology, uh, from an idea to a concept to actual market. Uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, the way we work is uh, our, our headquarters is SkyQuest Technology Ventures in in United States, which looks at research and entry into the United States market, uh, specifically looking at uh, reimbursement support to uh, regulatory approvals to actual licensing and investment advice. Uh, 
our operational headquarters in terms of uh, for evaluation and research services is uh, is in India, SkyQuest Technology Consulting Private Limited, which looks at uh, technology transfer and market entry into India, Israel, and the Middle East and North Africa region. Uh, SkyQuest IRN Associates uh, uh, is uh, our organization which represents uh, the activities related to the innovation ecosystem in China. Uh, it's headquartered in Nantong in China and in Shanghai. Uh, Investigators Forum Network, which assists uh, life science and uh, medtech companies with low-cost clinical development activities in India. Uh, Global Health Innovations uh, actually represents, uh, uh, supports uh, regulatory affairs and which holds, it's a unique endeavor which looks at uh, assisting companies with holding independent regulatory approvals in countries like India, China, South Korea and certain Asia, uh, Southeast Asian regions. And Ingenuity Ventures which are, is our early stage uh, uh, investment vehicle uh, which looks at uh, digital media, health and food sector as well as water and agriculture. So in terms of quick facts, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the sectors we look at is life sciences, clean tech, agri, nano and engineering, uh, and digital media. Uh, we've been in existence since 2006. Uh, we have so far served close to 103 clients across around 16 countries uh, with an experience of evaluating and assessing 540 plus technologies. And we are the only private sector workstation appointed by UNDP, United Nations Development Program, promoted South-South Global Assets and Technology Exchange, which works in 39 countries, including Asia, Africa, 18 African countries, and Middle Eastern countries, to promote transfer of technology and accessing these markets. Uh, internally, we, are, uh, we have 68 multilingual uh, with capabilities of uh, you know, Mandarin speaking, uh, German and English speaking staff. Uh, 68 uh, multilingual staff, which are technology management and data science professionals. The eight deal makers uh, and 48 independent technology scouts spread across several, uh, several cities. Uh, we have had uh, an experience of 37 transnational uh, deals uh, so far and close to $108 million, which we've been able to syndicate and help invest into various ventures, uh, around 16 of them uh, from across uh, different countries. Uh, close to $5.1 million of private funds which have been invested through Ingenuity Ventures into certain exciting digital media technologies as well as food and uh, beverage companies. Uh, this is a, a, you know, a quick view onto the scope of activities or different engagements which we've had uh, with several uh, stakeholders. So we, we carry out, we've done more than 150 plus engagements of partner identification, which could be a technology partner identification or business partner or distribution or manufacturing partner identification work for economic development agencies as well as for companies in agri to med tech, electronics and pharma sector. Uh, we've done, uh, we also help with market entry evaluation in terms of, you know, looking at what, mar what markets would be interesting to go for for an early stage or, you know, and uh, pre-revenue or even a revenue stage company uh, from the Asia Pacific to even uh, within the US with segments to look at. And we have a very strong data-driven market research team uh, where we have clients like Shire, Daiichi, and some of the large uh, pharma companies as our clients. Uh, we've had a, a technology licensing and co-development activities. We've been part of around 38, uh, 38 licensing deals, actually more than 37 plus. Uh, where we've dealt with academia, TTOs, as well as small and medium enterprises. Uh, we also support regulatory approvals in terms of, uh, you know, holding the, uh, in India, drug controller general licenses on behalf of uh, you know, the principals or uh, the companies outside India to hold uh, the independent interests so that in case if your local partner, there are any issues, you don't have to go through the whole registration process again. We would re continue to represent your interests. And we do the same in China as well as uh, South Korea and certain Middle Eastern countries. Based uh, in the US, specifically apart from USFD approval in the healthcare segment, we also assist with the reimbursement support, uh, getting into the reimbursement system. And uh, a very interesting uh, activity which we've uh, begun just a couple of months ago uh, with, you know, uh, with the interest from our clients is IP protection and policing services, wherein we represent the uh, IP interest and we uh, represent, uh, 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 we basically monitor constantly any possible uh, cases of infringement, especially in China and India, in terms of, you know, your brands, trademarks, copyrights and patents. And we would report it on a quarterly or a monthly, depending on 
the, the level of complexity of you know, the IP or the set of IPs. And uh, this is something which we are seeing a lot of traction with a lot of our US customers already, uh, where you know, we, we are basically your uh, hand, uh, hand, ears, feet, and brain on ground for you uh, to monitor and manage uh, the risks. Uh, also, fund syndication services for SMEs and startups. Uh, this I mentioned about the SS gate, South South Global Assets and Technology Exchange, which is uh, sp you know spread across around 39 countries. And uh, on the left, if you see, there are uh, certain other workstations. Now, when I say we are the only private sector world, uh, workstation, which means uh, in in for example in Vietnam, it is National Agency for Science and Technology Innovation, which is the representative, which is the Ministry of Science and Technology equivalent in Vietnam. In Malaysia, it is Surim Barhat. So from that perspective, it is a set of uh, very interesting stakeholders in the innovation and the science and technology trade ecosystem, which we are part of, uh, which is part of this UNDP promoted technology exchange platform. These are some of our key collaborations, right from Philippines to BioNegative clusters in Israel, Boston MedTech advisors in the US, Carbon First in UK, from Switzerland, uh, Taiwan. In fact, we work with one of the uh, so-called MIT equivalents of Asia called ETRI, Industrial Technology Research Institute based in Sinju, uh, which has been the uh, you know the breeding ground for Acer, BenQ, and some of the largest semiconductor industry. So we are the commercialization partner for them. Uh, Petentica in Russia, which is one of the largest IP filing agencies uh, in Russia. Uh, we work for them, we work for uh, Shanghai Technology and Transfer Exchange, one of the leading technology transfer exchanges in China. So these are some of our international affiliates. It's a very indicative list of some of our, as we call it, our happy clients, which we continue to work with continuously. Right from, if you see on the left hand, uh, uh, you know, right hand corner, it's some of the largest companies like Shire, Johnson, SC Johnson, to Advanced Biohealing, Avio, to even uh, on the topmost 10, we have Israel government as uh, whom we've been advisors for commercializing technologies into India and in China. Uh, we've had uh, agencies like UNDP, uh, Indian agencies and venture capital funds like India Innovation Fund, Gujarat Venture Finance Limited, uh, CSIR, one of the leading research labs in India, and cluster of research labs. and. The one I have circled uh, uh, in the center called Exciton Technologies is a, is, uh, 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 is a company based out of Edmonton, Alberta, uh, which was a, a very interesting medical device startup, uh, which we just started to engage with, you know, starting with the veteran affairs approval in the US and then went on to get the regulatory approval for them in, in, in India. And currently as we speak, they have been able to have uh, We've helped them with business relationships in China, getting a manufacturing JV, uh, in India a marketing JV, and in Spain, uh, you know, uh, a Spanish-speaking country JV with a company called Thrombo Targets. So, it's uh, you know we we start uh, basically we are able to bring in the expertise, uh, a 360-degree uh, understanding into the segment, and are able to accelerate, uh, and that's what has been the hallmark of the growth of SkyQuest since 2006 and now. Uh, these are just some of our international offices. You can visit our website and get more details. Uh, thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce the next uh, speaker. Uh, doesn't, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Of this. Okay. So I would now invite Yash Saxena. Okay. So um, I guess uh, you would have heard about uh, the state of Gujarat uh, so sometimes before also. Uh, we I've been working there uh, for quite some time now in building, uh, and we work with a lot of stakeholders and entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem there uh, in, in in building this whole ecosystem. And so basically, uh, my my presentation is here about you know how the uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Gujarat can work with the Ontario eco, uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem and how we can find more linkages, more collaborations, which can. Uh, lead to faster growth for both of our ecosystems. So uh, I'll just begin uh, as to sort of an at what state stage the, the ecosystem in Gujarat is right now. Uh, so uh, let me give 
for that some sort of an historical perspective. Uh, there was a time when uh, India, uh, Ahmedabad, which is the uh, which is which is the largest city in Gujarat, used to be called the Man Manchester of India. And how did it really went to that stage? So uh, this is a good historical uh, timeline. Uh, between 1850 to 1880, that is, and span of 30 years, uh, we had three Gujarati uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs opening up three cotton mills, and that was one for each decade. Uh, interestingly, in 1880, by the time that everybody was seeing that there was a lot of traction for the cotton mills in India, we had 26 of them coming up in just a uh, just in span of 20 years. That is, between 1880 to to, uh, to, nine, to, to 1880 to 1900. And that is the time when Ahmedabad was, became uh, the biggest textile manufacturing hub in India. It used to be called Manchester of India. Now, this is very interesting because this kind of gives a very interesting insight about how uh, this, the, the, the entrepreneurs or the businessmen in this state think and scale up. Uh, and that I would say that uh, they may be starting slow, but they scale up very fast, like as we saw in this slide. Now, right now, this, this ecosystem is sort of an, at an inflection point. We are seeing greater traction for startups. Uh, we've had a lot of traditional business based out of this state, uh, but now they are suddenly uh, moving towards more, uh, more new age businesses, towards startups, and we are sort of an, at an inflection point. And right now, this is the time when getting into this ecosystem is, e is easier, but it's kind of a great time to build in a very, uh, I would say, at a very low cost, some sort of an equity into this ecosystem. Uh, and basically, the, the state has a very strong uh, business environment. We, we, we have a lot of traditionally, uh, uh, Gujarat is known as the place where we have a lot of entrepreneurs working in businesses. Uh, uh, it already has some of the most vibrant economies, state-level economies in India. It, it, is, it is the fastest. It has two of, two of the three cities in this state are the fastest growing cities in India. And now we are seeing uh, even the entrepreneurs beyond this state are setting up their bases in this, sit this city, in this state, and they're growing, growing up and scaling up fast. Uh, they also call Ahmedabad the Boston of India, and the reason is that you have over 40 edu uh, institutes of higher education in this uh, in, in, in Ahmedabad itself. Uh, you have a unique collab, unique unique combination of the best management institute in India. You have the best design institute in India. You have some of the most reputed technology institutes in India in this one city, and so we are looking at you know a great input for the industry within this city. And this is, this is something which is very unique about it. And we, we, we've been running a lot of programs in this ecosystem. And we've had a great grassroots science coming up from this city that, that we, we believe are great science that, uh, that, are, that indicate that the ecosystem is going to grow and grow very fast in the coming years. So we've had weekend entrepreneurship programs uh, which are common across the world, but we just introduced this into the uh, in, in Ahmedabad, and what we saw that the uh, the Ahmedabad workshop became the most participated sort of a workshop like this in the country. Uh, greater than 50% of the weekend teams which came out of these programs they go, went on to set up their own uh, startups. Now, now for a weekend entrepreneurship program, these kind of uh, Statistics are very interesting because they generally are uh, like these are very encouraging numbers. So the, here are some some innovation-driven startups which are coming up from this ecosystem. So this photograph is of a Braille-enabled uh, smartphone which has been designed by one of the students in National Institute of Design, which is based out of Ahmedabad, and this is the first of its kind in the world. We have uh, another one, which is the first emergency homeostatic dressing, which has also come up from this ecosystem. Now, this is uh, 
a very interesting this 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 dressing is for emergency purposes when the when the wounds are very fatal and uh, and loss of blood can lead to death and so this is uh, low cost and this can work if you do not have access to immediate emerge, immediate medical uh, attention so this uh, and and the good thing is that this is already being used by the emergency kit for the indian armed forces uh, it is a patent pending technology which is uh, which is going to be recognized by the european union and that will also open up a la lot a large number of international markets for this device uh, for this innovation so basically uh, the idea is that we have a lot of these startups which are uh, innovation driven and they are getting and they are taking root in this city in this uh, gujarat entrepreneurial ecosystem and what we are looking forward to is that how can some of these startups can work with these startups in ontario uh, uh, ecosystem and we can you know build products faster we can scale up products faster and we can take them to multiple geographies across the world so one of those could be that the teams can work on building products together maybe we can build them at a low cost uh, based out of our ecosystem and maybe they can scale up to large number of markets in north america through the uh, through the uh, counterparts in ontario so uh, and then there is a lot of scope for cross border mentorship we could have a lot of mentors uh, in 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 the ontario ecosystem uh, working with the indian startups and then the vice versa because uh, we have we have a lot of uh, uh, you know good experts available in our ecosystem as well uh, lastly uh, so one of the organizations leading this change in uh, the gujarat entrepreneurial ecosystem is pan iit gujarat uh, it is a, a a body which uh, alumni body of uh, the uh, uh, of indian institute of technology so basically indian institute of technologies are some of the most reputed uh, are the most reputed uh, technology institutes in india and the alumni of these institutes have come together to form pan iit gujarat chapter so we have a very uh, a, a very uh, we have a lot of experts in this uh, uh, forum available who uh, who are who are very proficient in the technology fields that they represent and they could serve as mentors or they could serve as uh, advisors to uh, to to entities looking for forward to technical advisory and they've already been doing this work a lot in the uh, in the gujarat ecosystem and we look forward to find out a way if this could be also leverage for the ontario ecosystem uh, and and with that i would like to end this thank you uh, the next okay and and interestingly we have sashank who is who is also a part of uh, the gujarat ecosystem uh, no okay but anyways uh, uh, sashank will be following me after some uh, uh, after some uh, speakers and he, they are also working in the gujarat ecosystem and they've been doing a very fantastic work and i think he'll talk to you more about that thank you Okay, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for being here uh, today early morning. Uh, it's a wet morning, and uh, I, I do understand it's also heavy traffic outside. So appreciate all of you for taking time out and being here. My name is uh, Ambarish Datta, and I uh, head the Bombay Stock Exchange uh, Institute Limited. Uh, first of all, I'm extremely happy to be here, and uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll walk you through on what we do and uh, what we are looking forward to uh, to 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 be here. So, uh, BSC Institute is a subsidiary of uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange Limited. Uh, Bombay Stock Exchange, uh, for folks who don't know, is uh, uh, is Asia's oldest exchange, and we are extremely young. We were set up in 1875. Uh, to give people a perspective of how young we are, uh, this is before Coke was invented, and uh, the Eiffel Tower was just half built. 
So we've survived for over 135 years now, and uh, we were bombed once. Uh, we've almost bombed the second time, but uh, we, we've, we've, we've not done too badly. So the Bombay Stock Exchange started off as, uh, as a native shareholders association, and uh, we were a British colony. This was before independence. And uh, uh, strange as may sound, we were set up even before the central bank uh, was, was made up. So uh, that's, that's the background and history, and the institute uh, basically learns from the exchange. It was set up as a division to look at financial education. We're world number one in terms of listed companies, so we have about 6,000 uh, companies who are listed in the uh, exchange, and a good number of them are small, medium enterprises. Uh, we're also number three in uh, the index option trading now after uh, uh, NYSC. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, transactions, we, we do about 800 million transactions a day, and our average uh, transaction time is about 10 uh, millisecond. Uh, we believe this is extremely slow, and in about another six months' time, we'll move to a state uh, with a new uh, state-of-art trading technology, which will bring down trading transaction time to about two nanoseconds. So that's, that's the speed we are talking about. In terms of volume of transactions, this is probably among the top two transactions uh, in, across the world. So how does the BSC Institute and what does it do? Uh, BSC Institute primarily was set up as a center of excellence for financial education in 89. Uh, we, were, uh, uh, we were housed in the exchange and we are probably the only institute in the world which looks at financial education for multiple stakeholders. So what do we do? We train about 10,000 people at different levels. We, uh, we, we do right at undergraduate level, we do it for working professionals, we do for people who are already in the market, we do for international customers and we train them. So we train about 10,000 people. We're also equivalent to the FINRA in India, which means that we, we certify people for licensed activities. So we issue the license for them to either trade or to sell currency or to participate in depository activities or to even become a mutual fund advisor. So we conduct those examinations, which are about 40,000 uh, in, in every year. Uh, we are probably the world's largest financial market-focused capital market institute. So we currently offer about, uh, about 75 to 80 different open enrollment courses. Uh, which range from foundations of capital market to subjects like corporate directors' uh, roles and responsibilities to uh, IPO listing to even subjects like Islamic finance. Uh, housed within the exchange, students learn from practitioners. We, we probably are the only institute which has very little of academic knowledge because uh, we, we teach, so our, our trainers are primarily people who do the job who teach them as well. Uh, in terms of our focus areas, we, we primarily look at uh, financial education. So our first primary charter is to look at uh, making people financially aware. Uh, to give you a perspective, um, India is, of course, a fairly populated country, but we have just about 6% of India's population who participate in direct or indirect capital market activities. Our insurance penetration is just about, uh, about 11%, so which means that there's a huge percentage of people who don't even participate in, 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 in generic capital market activities. Uh, so in terms of uh, our charter, we look at skill development and training. Second, we look at financial literacy. We also, uh, uh, as an education institute, look at uh, developing an ecosystem for entrepreneurship development and uh, helping uh, uh, innovation take place. Uh, we also uh, run uh, training centers now across the world. We, we run a financial uh, center of excellence for financial education in uh, Thailand, in uh, Middle East, with both the market regulators. And we work very closely with uh, university professionals in Southeast Asia and in Europe. So we run a, a combined program at the Frankfurt School of Business and Finance and uh, Nine Road in Amsterdam. So uh, this is what we uh, primarily do. Why are we here? Uh, I'm, of course, looking at uh, collaborative opportunities with universities who share similar vision. Uh, I'm looking at uh, bringing courses to India and uh, uh, allowing opportunities to Canadian uh, universities to bring uh, learners to uh, an Indian market, get exposed to Indian opportunities, and, and get trained there. Uh, we are also looking to set up an innovation and incubation center within the BSC Institute, and I'll be more than happy to uh, explore potential tie-ups who can, uh, who'd want to tie up with us and, and, and be there. In fact, for entrepreneurs who are here and who are probably part of the uh, uh, OCE Discovery event, I would want to welcome you all to come and visit uh, BSC Institute with absolutely no landing cost. And uh, you know, either me or Ajay will be more than happy to uh, talk to either of you. And uh, all you need to do is just tell us when you want to come, and we'll be very happy to host you there. 
Uh, I'm also looking at uh, uh, looking at uh, you know center of excellence in financial education and uh, setting up uh, an industry academia in incubation lab. And uh, if if th these are your uh, goals of uh, interest, uh, please reach out and uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, talk. So thank you very much for being here and uh, appreciate your time. Uh, I'll be available to answer any questions after the event and uh, I look forward. Thank you. So, my name is Shashank. I work for the Center for Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship. So, this is what we are. We are housed out of India's best B school, and we are India's leading accelerator slash incubator. Uh, in terms of our sector focus, we have initiatives in clean technology. We have a unique public-private academia partnership going, which has created a, a small $25 million seed fund, which focuses on clean technology initiatives, not only housed in India, but technologies with application into India. So if there's a Canadian clean tech startup which is looking for entry into Indian market, uh, Infuse is probably a unique seed investor which is available for you. Arohan is our social enterprise focused initiative. It's a $20 million seed fund that we are raising right now. Uh, iAccelerator is India's first uh, IT and mobile accelerator. It started in 2008. And it has uh, given uh, a lot of impetus to the IT and mobile ecosystem in India. So apart from these investment activities that we do, we also consider ourselves as the ecosystem builder and our responsibility that we have towards building the ecosystem in India. And we, we run some initiatives which are large scale initiatives. So, so I, I think uh, this is something which you need to understand about India. It's really easy to get the numbers in India. Uh, getting 30,000 applicants uh, for a startup scouting program, we got that over two versions. So each version, uh, we were getting around 15,000 applications. We have 400 mentors across India uh, in eight cities. We have uh, so many startups that we have supported over the last three years, we have supported probably uh, more than 2,000 startups through mentoring and guiding. So, so that's the uniqueness about India. It's a large market. This, it's, it's bubbling with so much energy and there's so much opportunity. Everyone wants to do something that uh, I, I think it will not be wise to be politically correct. It will not be wise to ignore India at this moment. So. Uh, that's what we have been doing. We have been trying to uh, create an ecosystem, create enthusiasm about entrepreneurship in India. So what we do, uh, we would like to say that we lead big change. We, we inspire entrepreneurs, we scout for promising entrepreneurs, we mentor them, we incubate, and as an academic institute, we support research on entrepreneurship. So. Uh, housed in the best management institute, we have access to the best faculty, the best student resources, as well as India's largest alumni network amongst B schools. So there was an informal research done in 2011 by the institute, and we realized that almost 60% of India's CEOs of top 1,000 companies were coming from our institute. And it's a huge number. Uh, I, I think uh, the, the trend in these presentations is to compare uh, with uh, North American entities, so I can safely say that I come from what can be termed as the Harvard of India. So this is what we have been able to do in the last three, four years. Uh, the numbers in the colors will not be visible, so I'll talk about them. We uh, started in 2007 and realized that entrepreneurship wasn't something which was aspirational in India, and, and that's when we said we need to do something to make the young entrepreneurs move away from consulting and investment banking jobs and get into entrepreneurship. So that's when we, we published a book. We mandated an author to publish a book celebrating success of 25 entrepreneurs who had graduated from our school. We were expecting we'll be able to sell around 10,000 copies of the book. 
and it sold more than 4000 cop 400000 copies and got translated into 10 languages in india so and 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 a lot of people who come to us talk to us say that it was when they read the book that they felt that they need to start up and they need to do something which is entrepreneurial in nature we have helped more than 30000 people in crystallizing their ideas through various programs that we run we have over last 5 years mentored more more than 4000 entrepreneurs and over our capacity building initiatives over uh, workshops that we carry out we have supported more than 500 students and entrepreneurs uh in terms of our investment activities we have invested in 80 companies and uh, these are key numbers we have invested in 80 companies 95% of these companies have survived over more than 2 years and have been able to leverage the capital that we invested in them 18 times over so for every dollar that we are putting into startups uh external investors are bringing in 18 dollars into these companies within the next one and a half two years and i think that's an interesting number to note because we are typically the first institutional investor in a company that uh, we are supporting till we come into the company most of these companies are self funded or funded by uh, the family or friends so uh, getting an 18x uh, leverage on our uh, investment i think is a good uh, benchmark for us but we would like to improve it further so this is what uh, we can do we can talk about canadian uh, canadian startups entering into india i talked about infuse where we would be actively looking at technologies with application in india in the clean technology smart energy management domain uh we can be a base for understanding indian market we can help in getting accelerators in canada to access indian startups so that uh companies which have either raised series a or series b funding if they want to come into uh canada and north Ameri american market they can uh come through us we would be extremely interested in collaborative management research on entrepreneurship and startups out of uh, our fa we, our faculty group is uh, around 60 these are faculty members from indian institute of management who have interest in carrying out research uh, and there can be fellowship opportunity for canadian students to work with indian startups and we are definitely open for further suggestions i would be around in the conference and uh you can catch me if you are able to notice me so sorry morning um we're the youngest company on 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 uh, you know in as part of this delegation we're just a couple of months old uh but we've been around in the indian digital ecosystem for some time now uh we're a 10 million dollar seed fund promoted by a bunch of ex entrepreneurs uh i'm one of the founding partners there uh fundamentally the big difference is that we're pretty much people who roll up their sleeves and help without seeking control of the business uh essentially we partners you know at the early stage the two things that a startup doesn't have is time and money and what we try and help with is making sure they don't waste either time or money uh, our thesis is that you know fundamentally if we can improve the uh, execution capability of the startups that we work with we can improve the success outcomes of the businesses the way we've looked at it is we've kind of split it up into three broad categories that we help our startups with Uh, I think the display screens are a little small, so you know this this will be a little scratchy to read with. Let me read it down for you. Uh, we're the only GPs in India who've recently exited digital startups and actually moved to the venture capital side. The kind of operating knowledge that we bring on the on the digital ecosystem is uh, relatively different from what uh, the traditional venture capitalist in India has today. We're structured to pay attention to our funds, uh, to our portfolio companies. Uh, each GP has a limitation of working with five businesses a year at best. So by capping it structurally, we we end up working. Uh, we have the time to dedicate to work with each of our portfolio companies. We have a very carefully sculpted mentor network, which today spans about 50 mentors. Uh, we've 
cut them up into various categories. So, you know, we've got investors, we've got ex-entrepreneurs, we've got uh, functional experts, and then we've got platform companies. So everybody from the CEO of Facebook in India to, you know, to the, uh, you know some leaders at Google to uh, the directors of Microsoft to all the platform companies that are required because at the end of the day when a startup actually tries to access a market, right, it has to go through these. And the traditional three categories are, are typically uh, what is required with every startup mentor uh, network. Uh, on a social capital side, it's really the combined address books of, of uh, you know, us and the entire mentor network that we carry with us. Uh, essentially, we think that connections, social connections, and the ability to get in front of people uh, significantly alters the opportunities that are, that are available to a typical startup. Um, third, financial capital. We invest anything between 100 and 300K to start with, with a follow-up round uh, at a later date. Uh, we co-invest with financially stronger partners, so we have co-invested with uh, Bloom, who will come up here and present uh, later today, uh, and 500 startups. Our current, business, uh, current investment that we're engaging in is with 500 startups, so Dave McClure's business. Uh, and essentially, we've, we've, uh, we've worked very, uh, you know, as ex-entrepreneurs, we've kind of fine-tuned our thesis to revolve around segments where we think operating viability in the Indian ecosystem exists. So we've identified subsectors which we think are highly likely to succeed, given the relatively high opportunity cost for us and for our investors. And uh, we're applying our thesis of working closely with businesses in those specialized subsectors. Uh, that being said, we're always willing to hear some phenomenal young entrepreneurs impress us with their thesis and, and override ours. Uh, progress update, we closed, we did our first close uh, last, uh, beginning of the last uh, this quarter. Uh, since then, we've invested in two businesses. Uh, the first is a company called DataWeave, uh, which is a big data analytics company. Uh, it specializes in uh, price and competitive analytics. Uh, pretty phenomenal what they're able to do. I mean, at the click of a button, you can, you can compare uh, 500,000 SKUs uh, across 1,000 retailers for a stock and price comparison instantly. I mean, so the capability that you're talking about is information that was not available to uh, pricing analysts or you know, uh, you know, uh, anybody uh, for that matter, uh, till some time ago. So the second business that we've uh, invested in, and we haven't disclosed the name yet, uh, is is a business that's a combination of a Shopify and a ship station, uh, really targeted at the Indian SME ecosystem. Again, uh, it's it's. Uh, approximately 50 million SMEs in India, uh, which form the bulk of the economy. Uh, and just about 1% of them are online because of the challenges of getting online. Uh, so yeah, so that's the second business that we've invested in. Uh, it's, it's a great product, uh, you know, technologically significantly ahead of the market, uh, and we believe really strongly in the team. Uh, we've got a really strong pipeline. We think we'll probably be investing in a business a month from here on. Uh, we're kicking off our second office in Bangalore as we speak. Uh, we've had the good fortune, and I touch wood at that, uh, with, with the great found attraction, uh, which has enabled us to compete with significantly larger funds and, and win deals. Uh, you know, so both these deals and a couple of other deals in our pipeline, which we will convert uh, over the next couple of months, are all deals that we won against significantly larger funds. Uh, and we're starting to raise funds for our second round of, uh, for the second close of our fund. Uh, Goals here for this visit, um, essentially we're looking for ways that you know, our portfolio companies can access, uh, access the North American markets and vice versa. You know? So if, if there are uh, businesses or if there are funds or people over here who'd like to have a quid pro quo arrangement, we'd be more than happy to, to consider it. Uh, again, we're seeking potential investors for our second, for our second close of the fund. Um, and then essentially seeking insights onto what's happening in terms of technology on, 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 you know, and, and uh, innovation on the ecosystem here and hoping to learn from you guys. If there is anything, if there is anything you know, uh, that, that any one of you who'd love to get in touch with me, I might be here for, uh, for the next few hours and would be happy to have a conversation. And just close with this, I mean, you know, uh, yesterday some of us saw Peter Diamantis speaking um, and, and um, he spoke of you know, uh, that there's going to be three billion new minds added to the internet, uh, you know, over the next 10 years. I, I'd like to remind you that 15% of those people are going to be added in India, right? That's, that's, that's a hell of a lot of number of people, and that's, that's, that's something that's going to change the faces, you know, the face of a lot of, uh, let's say, economics and markets over, over, the, next, over the next decade. 
and you know that's the period in which we and you know some other people are we are investing in that ecosystem and we'd love to uh, make sure that canada it just as singapore has been builds closer ties on the investment side with india thank you so much oh and that's 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 our you know contacts if should anyone want to get in touch with us uh, you know email and twitter Bloom, uh, Sajid from Bloom Ventures. Uh, thanks, Gaurav. Yes, we've actually done a deal together, which he talked about. So, uh, yeah. So it's just some, some, uh, just a disclaimer. So I rep represent a venture capital fund from India. We are a $20 million fund. We've raised $20 million. We're going to raise another $5 million in India and $5 million overseas. We're just hoping to close. Uh, the venture ecosystem in India is uh, sort of still nascent. We've got a handful of funds, uh, but I think all of us are hoping for a big product company. So there's a lot of intellectual capital in India, and we are hoping to leverage off that. So you've got the big Wipro, Infosys, TCS companies. Now, we are hoping that product companies will come out of India, such as Inmobi. Now, Inmobi is actually a $200 million, uh, have raised $200 million, sorry. They're a billion dollar company, they compete with Google. So we are hoping to sort of get those best in class entrepreneurs to sort of be part of our, uh, our, part of our portfolio. Uh, well, so I'll just move to my, my presentation now. All right, so, well, the, inv the sort of early stage uh, investment uh, sort of ecosystem in India is not very well defined. Venture capital, private equity, public markets are, are there. In venture, you've got all the large funds such as Sequoia, Axel, Greylock. In private equity, you've got everyone from Blackstone to, to Carlyle there. And public markets is, is fairly well known. So we are hoping to sort of be in the early stage ecosystem, uh, along with five ideas and multiple and, and a handful of other funds as well. OK, so our focus is going to be sort of, I'd say, a pre-Series A, uh, where we'd have, uh, we would take part in either seed, angel, and pre-Series A deals. Uh, across from a risk perspective, we'll be present in all three. Uh, Series A is also well defined, where we've got Kleiner, Perkins, Sequoia, IDG, Axel, and, and the rest. Uh, this is a fun investment strategy, where we, we've out of our $20 million, we hope to invest in about 40 companies with the sweet spot of 500K. And we'll probably hope that we'll invest in about eight or 10 of our winners, where we'll put in a million to million point five dollars. These are some of our, our sort of companies that have already done well. Uh, Hotel Logix, uh, we co-invested with Axel, who invested in Facebook. Uh, they are a SaaS uh, sort of product for hotel property management. Uh, so basically, a small hotel of 20 rooms can actually pay per user and actually use the entire suite of the entire ERP that's available to large hotels. Uh, Metal co-invested with another large fund uh, called Kalari Capital, makes online assessment for big big companies. Uh, Mobstack is a sort of mobile first tool for people who are moving from your typical websites onto uh, onto creating sort of pages or on, on mobile devices. That's where it is, automatically converts that. Taxi for short is a sort of uh, an Indian version of the Uber uh, and Halo app, uh, where it's sort of such cab aggregation service. Uh, Axel Partners has been part of this round as well. Okay. Well, we're sort of sector agnostic. Uh, we invest in internet, mobile, ad tech, SaaS, uh, clean tech, uh, consumer brands, uh, life sciences, manufacturing. So we've got a fairly large portfolio. Uh, we sort of use this, we sort of leverage off uh, a very uh, large base of domain experts uh, that we've sort of come to know and we sort of engage with them on a deal, on a deal by deal basis and we sort of encourage them to come on board and help us. Having said that, we have, uh, a, we put a lot of uh, focus on, on sort of on co-investors as well as high quality co-investors that will be part of our deals. So they also add a lot of value to the, to, to the company. Well, this is our ecosystem, which is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, our LPs include some of the leading digital entrepreneurs of, of India. Uh, we've got some, some, some large, very successful entrepreneurs from the US as well, from Silicon Valley. And we've got a lot of family offices and some institutions from India as well who've invested in, in us. OK, so basically, our team, we've got, we've got a sort of six-member team, but we've got four, four people on the investment professional front. Uh, such as myself and two others, uh, three others, uh, two partners. Uh, I'm an ex-entrepreneur, and uh, the other uh, the other partners have experience in in, in private equity and, and and some venture and consulting as well. 
so yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. And uh, thanks, thanks for thanks for this. I'd like to introduce the next speaker. I don't know who it is, but there's no sign of who the next speaker is. Very good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bhupesh Daharia, and I'm a trustee of Aegis Knowledge Trust. Uh, Aegis Knowledge Trust runs uh, three property. We run India's best telecommunication management school based out of New Bombay. Uh, we also run Asia's largest innovation award, Aegis Graham Bell Award, and primarily I will be talking about Aegis Graham Bell Award. And third property we run, the world's first mobile university, wherein educators can deliver their courses online anywhere, anytime. So I'll show you a short video about Aegis Graham Bell Award, and then I'll talk about that. I think I've done a great job in terms of innovating and understanding the specific needs, expectations, and aspirations. 648 Innovation is not real something that is only happening in those areas, areas and that's why the focus and attention on the market. A lot of the content is there. Yeah, we will indeed need ideas to explain. Exciting insights. How that is. Early in the morning. Early in the morning. Early in the morning. The condition criteria is to get the best candidate. Hearty congratulations to you. So Aegis Graham Bell Award, we started in 2010, and now it has become the Asia's largest innovation award for internet uh, telecom, internet, media, and entertainment. And we think that this, this, this formed the complete ecosystem for the entire telecom. And last year, we had around 140 nominations from over 80 companies. And primarily around 80, 50 percent companies are the large size companies. So you name Vodafone, Airtel, Idea, uh, Ericsson of the world. And then you have a startup company, the small companies. So this is the perfect platform wherein small companies and the large companies can interact with each other. So you have system integrators like uh, Tech Mahindra, like Wipro, like TCS of the world. Then you have large vendors like Ericsson, Huawei, Jetty. Then you have operators like Airtel, Vodafone, Tata Communications, right? Then the government bodies uh, like DOT, uh, TRAI. Then you have cellular operator association. You have academic institutions. So it, it formed the complete ecosystem wherein uh, the small companies and large companies can interact with each other. We have investors as well, like Intel Capital is also part of the jury. The opportunities what this award offers, uh, like Ajay approached us, and we realized there are a lot of companies in Canada, okay, which are considered as a junk technology, right? And they could be a gold mine in India. So I have met a couple of uh, young entrepreneurs over here, and when they are designing mobile application, they're targeting for, say, a million, uh, for million users, right? And the place where I live, uh, that suburb population is around 3 million. Mumbai has got around 22 million. So 22 million is bigger than Australia. So when we think about India, right, so you, you can reach to a scale of 500 million, 900 million. Today we have overall users, mobile users in India around 950 million users, right? So it's a pretty big market. So this award becomes a gateway to the Indian market. Now, the participating company, when they go through this whole process, the process is pretty rigorous. So irrespective of whether you win an award or you don't win an award, you get, you get to know the Indian perspective, right? So maybe over here, the VC might reject your uh, business idea, right? But if you go through this process, uh, the, uh, the, jury, uh, the VCs, which are the part of the jury, they might like your idea. 
and you will be able to really connect with the operators or system integrators over there in India, and that will open a market for you. You can interact and network with the decision makers in the entire ecosystem. Uh, you will get the perspective about the India, and you can break through the clutter of the media. So Bloomberg is our partner. Okay, so last year we had around 24 episodes on the Bloomberg uh, television. So you get the wide exposure in the media. And of course, if you win an award, you, you get the recognition, you, you become the celebrity there. This year, our focus area is big data, social, mobility, uh, cloud, uh, augmented reality. So these are the, our focus area for this year. So these are the participating companies. Uh, you can recognize uh, half of these companies. These are pretty large companies and small companies. Uh, now, why we are here? We are here to invite uh, the various incubation centers, centers of excellence, to partner with us and, and give exposure to their entrepreneurs and startup companies in India. Thank you so much. Uh, we are over here. And uh, if you want to reach us, this is the website. And you can find out the contact details. Thank you so much. Good morning. It looks like we've thinned thin down on the audience, but well, no one wants to listen to their lawyers now, do they? But very quickly, I, you know, we've got a little bit of time. Um, just like to uh, m m mention that we are, a, we, we are a national law firm in India, having four of offices. Uh, we are 170 lawyers. Uh, we've, we've grown fantastically in the last uh, 12, 12 years that we have been around, so we're quite young. We are fleet-footed, and we like to be at the cutting edge of all the legal work that, that there is in India. So uh, very quickly, this is the sort of the, the, the sectors that, that we tend to deal with. We are a full, full service firm. Our speciality, of course, lies in the corporate and uh, you know, pri private equ equity and venture capital space. We are a full service firm, but having said that, we've, we've got a specialist expertise in the TMT space. So our TMT space is sort of uh, built very, very sort of uniquely as compared to other firms in India, we, we, we tend to be very, very sector focused. So we've got a fantastic team that is dedicated to, to doing technology work. We understand technology, unlike a, a lot of firms in, in in India. We tend to look at, you know, we've, we've looked at, you know, the broad range of the TMT practice. So we, we are one of the first um, law firms to actually help outsourcing into India. So we've done you know these contracts whereby financial institutions have gone into India to uh, to to outsource various functions um, you know we we've, we've, we've got the the telecommunications practice that we have is one of the best in the country we, we represent several of the operators uh, we've got a media practice which is both old age and new age we we've got fantastic uh, you know clients in the in internet space who are both on the e-commerce size as well as at, at the back end who are building the platforms for, for, for various companies. Um, in terms of understanding of the law, I, I, I don't think there is any anyone else in India who, who does it as well as we do, primarily because we tend to write the law as well. So we, we, we have been involved in the formulation of the privacy laws for India. So we're actually working at present with the government to set up the, the law for, for, for India. So just quickly to talk about a few of the clients that we have. So it's sort of, you know, we've got the, the full spectrum of the billion dollar companies to all the startups. We've had various companies like, for instance, uh, OLX.in, which, we, you know, which we started out as a very, very small player in India, but now has grown to become the, the largest site in terms of the, the classified space in India. We do a lot of work with Indian um, ent entrepreneurs, Hathaway being one of them, who are now in, in, in the media space, extremely large, you know, doing their second round of, uh, of uh, pu public market access. Uh, we've, you know, we, we've got the likes of Wiki, and who, who we sort of help 
on a you know um, yeah, sort of a reduced fee basis big, 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 because of the nature of the work that that they do. So all in all, we are we 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 would be able to help a lot of the Canadian players who are looking to come into India and help them strategize around you know how they would like to enter the Indian markets, how they would like to do joint ventures in India, how they would like to sort of license their technology and exploit the the Indian markets. Thank you very much. I think our next one, next one is, is, is Satish. Hi, good morning to all of you and thanks a lot for inviting me again over here. Uh, I'm Satish Kataria. I represent uh, Cyber Media India, which is India's one of the largest uh, publication groups. And we are also very actively involved in the startup ecosystem. Uh, indeed, uh, this is my third trip to Canada and second trip to OCE. Uh, I was so impressed with the whole energy and passion at OCE last year that I really wanted to come down again this year. And I'm thankful to my organizers uh, who have uh, been kind enough to invite me here. Uh, just to quickly run you uh, through what I've been doing, uh, I've been working over the last 13 years uh, in different capacities. And my last five years, I've been working uh, in two specific areas. One is obviously to uh, enable startups, uh, and second is uh, to pioneer the whole concept of uh, crowdfunding in India. And uh, my visit to Canada is, uh, is on uh, both of these accounts. So, uh, okay, this is the next one. Yeah. Uh, so my first reason to come here is, uh, is about uh, uh, DARE Accelerator. DARE, uh, which is part of the Cyber Media India Limited, uh, is India's one of the oldest uh, media platform talking about startups and entrepreneurs. And now we are taking a next leap uh, from being a media platform to actually enable and uh, influence startups. Uh, and we are setting up a, a, start, a large startup accelerator uh, in northern part of India, uh, which will have an investment outlay of about $2 million over a period of three years. And we will also be following this up with a, a small uh, seed fund. Uh, this will be led in by Mr. Pradeep Gupta, uh, who has been uh, a co-founder for uh, Indian Angel Network, uh, which is India's largest network of angel investors. Indeed, IAN has made investments in two or three startups, which are based out of Toronto itself. Uh, what we seek out here is obviously uh, we, have, we are seeking interest from investors uh, who are looking at global opportunities and would want to be part of the Indian startup ecosystem. We would also leak, uh, like to partner with uh, similar accelerators and ecosystem partners uh, wherein we could exchange uh, best practices and could become uh, a bridge between Indian and Canadian markets. Uh, and obviously, we are looking at a uh, few Indian uh, interesting uh, Canadian startups uh, who, we would, who we would like to pick up and invest in them uh, to help them scale up their business in India as well as in Asia. My next venture, uh, which I've co-founded, is called Catapult, uh, which is into the space of uh, crowdfunding. Uh, indeed, uh, we have today, we, uh, we can call it that this is the world's most uh, crowdfunding platform emerging out of India. Uh, the reason being that uh, we, have we have several unique features uh, on this platform. Uh, one of them being a unique uh, three-tier reward system, which no other crowdfunding platform today offers. Uh, the reason was obviously to model it as well Asian markets, and hence we wanted to make it much more rewarding and uh, engaging experience. Uh, we were the official crowdfunding platform at the Hong Kong uh, International Film Festival, and are backed by leading international and national film experts today. Uh, we also are representing a lot of Indian films at international film festivals as part of the catapult exercise. Uh, what we are seeking out here are obviously projects. Uh, so if there are any interesting media properties or any interesting projects which are looking out uh, seeking crowdfunding opportunities from India and Asia, uh, we'll be happy to discuss them. And uh, obviously we're looking at uh, ecosystem partners. Uh, any Canadian companies who are interested to uh, look at crowdfunding opportunities in Asia, uh, I'll be happy to deal, uh, to talk with them. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank AJ and the delegation from India. Thank you for providing the, um, some insights to us with regards to how to access information and services that will help to facilitate some of those um, uh, and establish some of those business uh, relationships and partnerships with, with India. So thank you very much. 
So um, we're not done yet. We, um, our next presentation uh, this morning, um, and for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Sharon Jobity. I'm the Vice President of Human Resources with the Ontario Centers of Excellence. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you our next international speaker from the United Kingdom, who is Will Morgan, who is the Chief Financial Officer for New Energy Ventures. New Energy Ventures AG is an independent Swiss-based company specializing in the clean technology industry and they are interested in investment opportunities with maturing clean tech companies that are ready to commercialize in Europe. So if you have any questions, um, I think there will be opportunity after Will's presentation, but I'd like to welcome Will up to the podium. Thanks. Hi there. Uh, not a great audience, so I'll be, I'll be brief, but uh, just to say that I'm very grateful to Invest in Ontario for inviting me here, and uh, it is uh, an exciting event out there, and certainly the, the speaker, the keynote yesterday was, was inspiration to, to me. Um, I'm in a partnership with three other guys based in Madrid. I've decided to, to come here because I see a lot of potential in the community and the, the effort that is going in to develop commercial uh, clusters around centers uh, of excellence and innovation. Uh, and certainly I'm looking forward to, to finding out more about the kind of opportunities to engage both as a platform for development in North America and also find ventures that are looking to uh, develop their businesses in uh, attractive markets in Europe. Now, for us, the focus is very much from high to low carbon. That's uh, the theme that we believe will be one of the strongest, if not the strongest, uh, commercial and economic transitions in the next decade. Uh, and we believe that the main focus for, for opportunity from an early stage perspective is around uh, uh, the, the savings that can be generated through uh, efficiency gains, through energy storage, through uh, the smart cities, and through ways to manage our waste. So just to give a flavor of that um, before I stand down, uh, for us in the built environment, we already have uh, a technology that can allow us to, to build a zero energy house for less than $750 a square meter. We're, we're quite excited in the, the storage space about a process in the Basque country that is capable of recovering waste aluminum, which Peter Diamandis yesterday was talking about being uh, more expensive than gold a few hundred years ago, um, that that waste is now possible. Is now possible to convert that into hydrogen to store it and to to even take advantage of byproducts for the pharmaceuticals industry. Um, so, basically, around those areas, also in waste, uh, we see the opportunity to generate fuel that can even displace coal. So, um, there's a lot of great stuff. We we'll look forward to finding out more. Uh, as we go along the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Will, for your presentation. I know that Will will be um, on the floor um, for the remainder of the day, so if you have any questions you'd like to engage with him, please, please feel free to do so. Um, that concludes uh, this morning's uh, presentations. We will resume again this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Please enjoy the rest of your day and um, have, a, have an enjoyable lunch. Thank you. <laughs>